Do you want to know why I fly fish? When I was a kid, my most favorite thing in the whole world was to ride my bike down to the woods and play in the creek. I had muck boots and a butterfly net and some friends. We'd harass the minnows and crawdads and throw skunk cabbage at each other and just be kids playing in a creek. We explored those creeks and woods until we knew every inch of them. But there was always more. We could always go a little further than we had before. There was always something new to explore. I'm still doing the same thing today. Fishing is just a way for me to stomp around in the creek. Instead of a butterfly net, I've got a fly rod or maybe even a boat, but I'm doing the exact same things with my friends. We can get to know a place intimately, which we do, or we can explore. There's always more to explore, and I really think that's the best part. Getting out and finding new stuff is the best part of fly fishing, and it takes me right back to when I was a kid. That is why I fish. I just like stomping around in the creek. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Are you ready for this one? Grab a beer and settle in because I'm going to drop some knowledge here. So you read the title, you know this video is about how to find good fishing spots. You always got to find new spots and keep it fresh. I'm going to cover a lot of stuff, but the big takeaway here is that your best resources are time spent researching at home and a willingness to explore. There, I said it. You can play it safe and just fish places you've read or heard about, but some of the biggest rewards in fly fishing come from finding spots on your own. Before I tell you how to find good fishing spots, first let me tell you how not to find fishing spots. Spots. Don't go on the internet and ask for free info. This is how it usually goes. I'll be in Denver next month and I have one day to fish. What are some of your favorite spots? I'm not looking for your honey holes, just some general advice. Stop wasting your time. First of all, why would I share my hard earned and well protected info with some goob from the interwebs? Secondly, 10 seconds of searching on Google will give you better info than some guy on Reddit who's been fly fishing for three weeks. I gotta pause for a minute, there's a train going by. Okay, now let's talk about how to do it right how to find good fishing spots. We'll start with the traditional methods, guidebooks, maps, and fly shops. Guidebooks are a pretty good source. Some of the people that write that stuff should be ostracized, but it's good info and it's out there now, so you might as well take advantage of it. All right, maps. Learn how to read a map. Buy the gazetteer for where you want to fish. These things are great, you'll love them. The blue lines and blobs on there, that's water. That's where the fish live. And what about fly shops? Talk to the guys at the fly shop. They know where the fish are. They will tell you some spots, but if you want to grease the wheels a bit, watch my fly shop etiquette video. Learn how to get those guys to give up the goods. That's a lot of G's. If you use those kind of traditional methods to find spots, it'll usually steer you to the old standbys, spots that everyone knows about and where everyone goes. You're not going to find me at those places. Like the toilet bowl and the frying pan is about the least appealing place to fish that I can think of. Hey, a lot of people love it. It's not for me. Oh, neat. You caught a big fish. How many flies did you pull out of its butt before you released it? I think those places are lamer than lame, but I'm very thankful that they exist because they suck in hordes of anglers that I might otherwise be competing with. Okay, guidebooks, maps, and shops are all right, but it's 2020 now. We got a lot of new tools that weren't available when I was coming up, and they are awesome. I mean, how about Google? Have you heard of that? I don't need to tell you how much info is available by Google. Find a rabbit hole and go down it. The main thing to realize is that if there is a ton of information on a certain place, it means a lot of people fish there. The fishing might still be good, but you'll have some company. If there's lack of information about a certain spot, that can go either way. If you can't find info on a spot you're curious about, it could be fishing Mecca or a complete waste of time. Probably somewhere in between. Okay, how about satellite imagery? Great tool you should be using. Basically, this has replaced our dear old friends, the Gazetteers. I'll miss you guys. Satellite imagery can give you an idea of how steep the terrain is, what the vegetation is like. You can even spot the good holes or places you don't want to fish. If you see steep terrain, it's going to have more pocket water. It can be good fishing if you're into that, but it's going to be tougher to move around. I like meandering water lately, so I look for that. Extra bonus if there aren't any trees around. You can get fooled though. Sometimes what you find on the ground is a lot different than how it looked on your laptop. One thing that comes up depending on where you live is working around private land. How do you find what's public and how to access it? I use an app for that. You have to pay for it, which is okay with me because I use it all the time. But if you don't want to pay for it, you can try to look up the county assessor's website for wherever you're going to be fishing. 
They might have maps that you can look at. So you'll still have to learn how to read a map. I want to know exactly where the private and public boundaries are so I can play by the rules. But I thought you said there were no rules in fishing, Ben. So everything I've talked about so far is just the research end of things. Eventually, you're going to have to go out into the world and put all this research to use. I'll warn you right now, you're going to fail sometimes. I've spent countless hours driving and walked many, many miles only to find terrible fishing. It's going to happen. It's part of the deal. It's called paying your dues, and it seems to be a dying art. But it's not all bad. You might find fishing Valhalla and have one of the greatest days of your life, besides that time you played Seven Minutes in Heaven with Becky Nowitzki in the sixth grade. But don't be scared to fail when you're trying to find new spots. If you need to slam a bunch of big fish every time you go fishing, I encourage you to find another way to spend your time. Fishing might not be for you. You need to be okay with putting forth a lot of effort and having nothing to show for it besides maybe some blisters on your feet and an empty gas tank. The failures will make the successes even sweeter. Oh, that's good. Write that down. You know, I think I could have made this video a lot shorter, like two sentences. How do you find good fishing spots? Go look for them. That's it. That's the whole thing. Go explore. Let's wrap it up there. Thank you as always for watching another one of my videos. Maybe drop me a like and subscribe. That would be cool. Check back next Monday for another video. Drop by hugeflyfisherman.com and stay huge. I wonder if there's anybody named Becky Nowitzki. I should look that up.